Hello everyone. This is going to be a quick video about baking textures from a train to texture maps in Blender. Uh, if you've been following the channel at all, you might have seen several other videos I put together on how to put together rich environments like this, where you have several different textures painted one on top of another to allow you to build up complex effects. And while this can be uh, pretty nice, it comes with a pretty complex shader network too. If I just select the mesh, you can see the complexity of this network that we've set up. And while you can build something like this in your game engine, it might be easier to just have a few texture maps to uh, put onto a default shader, uh, which might be faster. Uh, it will be a little bit lo lower resolution than what you get with this, but uh, depending on your situation, that might be exactly what you're looking for. So I'm going to start off with the simplest case where we're just doing a one-to-one -one bake, so a single set of textures for this entire mesh. And then I'm going to be going on and showing how you can break this mesh into sections if you have a really large terrain and you only want to bake a little part of it. All right, let's get going. Okay, for the simplest case where we're just baking from the mesh onto itself, we're going to start off by creating the new images that we're going to bake onto. So you can see I have the uh, image editor open already. So we're going to go to image, new, and we're going to create a new bake diffuse map. Uh, I'm going to leave this at the default 1024 or and by 1024 for now. You can use something bigger if that's what you want, but in order to keep things fast for the demo, I'm going to keep this a little bit small and I'm going to click OK. And there's our new uh, diffuse texture. This is what we're going to be baking to. Uh, next, we're going to come over here into the shader. And I'm going to press Shift A and go to uh, Image Texture to create a new blank image texture node. Now, this is important. We're not going to connect this up to anything. Uh, we are going to select the bake diffuse. And we're going to leave this selected so that when we do the baking, Blender knows that we are baking to this node because when the bake runs, it's going to look through uh, the, the entire Blender file to see which particular texture node is selected. And by leaving the selected, Blender is going to know this is going to be the target of our bake. It doesn't matter where we put it. We just have to make sure that this is selected. And all right, next we're going to come over and make sure that our render mode is set to cycles because this does not work in EV yet. And we are going to come down to the bake settings and open that up. All right, uh, make sure that the mesh is selected and we are going to do a diffuse bake because we're just doing the diffuse map for now. We're going to unselect direct and indirect because this is lighting and we don't want the lighting information. We just want to bake the color channel and uh, the rest of this looks good. So I'm going to just double check, make sure your mesh is selected, make sure the bake target is selected, and make sure the lighting information is off and make sure that is set to diffuse. Uh, that's all good, so let's click bake and wait for this to finish. And this can take a while, so I'm gonna fast forward a bit until we get our final result and uh, we can see the uh, result of our bake. Okay, and our bake is done. And you can see if we go in a little bit closer here, this is, uh, we've lost a little bit of resolution, but you can fix that by just making this texture a little bit bigger. And you can see we've baked down this whole complex shader network into a single texture map that we can then save to disk and use in our game engine. Uh, now uh, we're gonna, you're probably gonna want to have more than just the diffuse map, so let's go on and create the normals map. Uh, our shader here has normals information uh, being produced too, you can see it right there. So the procedure here is pretty much the same as what we did before. You can go here to image, create a new image map, or we're gonna call this bake normals. And uh, for now, I'm just going to leave it at 1024 by 1024. You can use something larger. Uh, 
and we're going to go with OK. And uh, we're going to create a new texture target over here. Going to press Shift A, texture, uh, image texture. Go there and let's set that to our big normals. And uh, one more thing, because this is a normals map, I'm going to press N to open this little side thing here. Go down here to image. And we are going to let's open that up a little bit. Color space, we're going to change that from sRGB to non-color. Because color, uh, because normal information is not meant to be visual color, it's meant to be data. So uh, you're going to want to make sure that's non-color, otherwise uh, you can get artifacts. So let's press N to close that up again. Make sure Big Normals is selected over here. Uh, make sure that we're still in cycles. And uh, the big type is now going to be normal. Uh, the rest of this looks good, so let's press, press bake and bake our normal map. Okay, and there are our normals. Uh, if we zoom in, we can see it's a little bit rough, but uh, you can fix that just by uh, upping the resolution a little bit. And uh, we have one more map we'd like to bake out. We also have roughness information on our model here. So let's bake that out too. Uh, the procedure is pretty much the same. We'll go to image, new. Uh, we'll call this bake rough. And go to OK. Let's add uh, another image to our shader window here. Shift A, texture image texture, set this to the big roughness, uh, set the color space to non-color because this is going to be data rather than color, and all right, make sure our mesh is selected, make sure the texture node is selected. Uh, we're going to set the bake type to roughness, and you can see the other options you have here, and the default should be fine, so let's click bake and bake our roughness map. Okay, and there's our roughness map. And now we have our three maps baked out. Uh, there's our diffuse, there's our roughness, there's our normals. You can save these all to disk and then just use them in a regular shader uh, for your terrain in your game engine or even in Blender. If uh, you just want something that runs a little bit faster than this complicated shader that we built up to let us do our layering. Now, terrains can get huge, so rather than rendering the entire thing to a single set of texture maps, you might want to be able to break your terrain into chunks so that you can uh, texture each chunk individually, which can be a lot easier to work with. So here we have our original terrain, which hypothetically could be huge. Let's uh, turn on the overlays again. And what we're going to do is we're going to make a duplicate of this and we're going to bake from our source terrain to the uh, chunk that we're going to export. So uh, to start with, I'm just going to press Shift D to duplicate this. And you can see here is our second bit of terrain. Let's just change the name of that to uh, bake because this is what we're going to be baking to. And uh, let's turn off the source terrain for a moment. So we just have our other one here. Uh, let us uh, go into overhead mode by clicking on the Z there. And we're going to just isolate a chunk of it that we want to bake to. So let's say we're just interested in this lower left section over here. So I'm going to press tab to go into edit mode. I'm going to drag out a little selection there. Control I to select those other vertices. And I'm going to delete that just to get ourselves a little subsection of our mesh. Okay, now this is good. Uh, we're going to need to fix the UVs here because if we go over to the UV editing tab and select all the vertices, uh, you can see that uh, this doesn't cover the whole plane. We want to be able to use as much of this square as possible. So we're going to come over here, press the U key, 
for unwrap and we're going to do uh, cube uh, project from view bounds while we are looking at it from overhead mode. What this is going to do is uh, wrap is going to uh, project this uh, based on the view that we're looking at, which is overhead orthogonal, and that puts everything neatly into the one by one square. Now we can come back over here to layout, and uh, you can see that this now has sort of the mini version of the entire terrain. That's not what we want. In fact, we want to give this an entirely new texture because when we export it, it's not going to have the original texture with this complex shading network on it. So let's press the X there. It's going to have a nice, simple network with just uh, your basic diffuse and normal and roughness maps. So we're going to click on base color here, go to image texture, and if we zoom out there, you can see we have just a regular setup with just a regular image texture coming into our principled BSDF shader here. Now, uh, one last thing, we're going to need to set up the texture we're going to bake to. So come up here to image, new, we're going to call this bake diffuse. And select OK. And um, all right, this all looks good. Let's turn back on our terrain mesh here. So we're going to bake from our terrain mesh into this special little section over here. Oh, and uh, the image texture, let's make sure we select the bake diffuse there. And uh, color space is sRGB. That's fine because we're baking color. And uh, make sure the bake diffuse is selected. All right, now let's come back over here. Uh, make sure we're rendering in cycles. And let's come down here to the bake section. Uh, we are going to do a diffuse bake. Click on diffuse. Make sure to unselect direct and indirect so we have no lighting information. We're just copying the color. And because we're copying from one mesh to a second mesh, click on selected to active. And make sure that you select the uh, source mesh first, then you're going to press shift and select the mesh we're baking to second. And if you look back up here in the outliner, you can see the source mesh is dark orange and the target mesh is light orange. Uh, if you have that set up, that should be exactly what you want. Okay, everything else here looks good. Uh, so. We've got the selection correct. We have our bake diffuse selected. Uh, all our parameters are set up correctly. We're going to click bake and wait for this to finish. Okay, and there is our baked diffuse. And if we zoom in, we can see we have uh, rendered just a little corner of the map uh, with all the uh, details from the source. And if you want to, let's say, bake the normals, the procedure is pretty similar. Uh, we're just going to set up normals the way you normally do in a regular principle B BSDF shader. Let's create the uh, normal map node first. Okay, and feed that into the normal section here. This is just a weird thing you have to do in Blender. And uh, now let's create the texture we're going to bake to. Come over here to image, new, uh, let's call this bake normals. And uh, let's use that default size. And we're going to create a new texture node over here. Image texture node, let's set that to the new bake normals we just created. Set the color space to non-color because this is data. And let's feed that color into the normal map. Okay, so far this is just a regular setup for how you would do normals for a regular BSDF shader. Now let's do the bake. Make sure the bake normals node is selected. Uh, we are going to make sure that select the source terrain first and then shift select the target. And uh, so we should have dark orange for our source and light orange for our target. Uh, the bake type is now going to be normals or normal. 
and the rest of these defaults look good. Make sure selected to active is still checked and we're going to click bake and wait for this to finish. And there's our normal map done. Uh, if we turn off the terrain mesh, you can see our own our little section right there. Uh, we can zoom into the normals map that we've baked here and sort of see there's a little bit of a complexity right there. I think that's just because uh, where you have some stretching in that corner of the map. But yeah, and you can go ahead and do this with any of the other types of maps you might want to bake. And that's how you bake normals from a terrain. Uh, I hope you found this useful, and thanks for watching.